Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Lenovo ThinkBook 13S Gen 4. And what makes this laptop so special is it's powered by the new AMD Ryzen 7 6800U APU. So we've got that new RDNA2 iGPU, and this is actually paired up with 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 running at 6400 megahertz. And in turn, that should make for some really good integrated graphics performance, but another thing we're going to be testing out on this is an external GPU connected over USB 4. Since these new Ryzen 6000 laptops support USB 4, it is possible to connect the Thunderbolt eGPU dock to this, and we're definitely going to try that out by the end of the video. But I'm also really interested to see what kind of performance this thing's going to put out with that new integrated Radeon 680M GPU. When it comes to I.O. on the 13S, over here on the left hand side we've got two USB Type-C ports. Now only one of these is USB 4.0, the other one is 3.2, but we also get a full size HDMI port on this unit. Over on the right hand side we've got a 3.5mm combo jack and a full size USB 3.2 port. Got a really nice single zone backlit keyboard here, and the laptop itself is super thin and light, only coming in at 2.75 pounds, and for the performance this thing puts out, given that we don't have a dedicated GPU, I think it's a really great size for an Ultrabook. But the one thing I'm really excited about testing out is an eGPU over USB 4. I want to see if this will work out. This is my Sonnet dock. I've got an RTX 3080 Ti installed, and yeah, it's definitely going to be overkill, and we're not going to get the max performance out of this due to the bandwidth limit over USB 4, but as long as we can get the laptop to detect it, I'm sure we can up the GPU performance on this little Ultrabook. So this is what I'm going to be testing with in this video, but if you're interested in seeing lower end cards connected over USB 4, let me know in the comments below and I can do a dedicated video. So what we have here is the new Lenovo 13S Gen 4. For the CPU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 6800U, 8 cores, 16 threads, it's got a base clock of 2.7 and a boost up to 4.7. The built-in GPU is the new Radeon 680M, it's based on RDNA 2, it's got 12 CUs and a clock up to 2200 MHz. And when it comes to integrated graphics, at least as of making this video, this is the most powerful that you can get. We've also got 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM running at 6400 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, 13.3 inch 1920 by 1200 IPS display, hence the name 13S. It supports Dolby Vision and FreeSync. We've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 right out of the box. And by the way, you can actually pick the same laptop up with the 6600U, but I opted for the more powerful variant. So straight off the bat, we're going to jump right into a little bit of PC gaming. We've got God of War at 1280 x 800, original settings, and FSR is set to performance. So we're not quite there at 60, but with this FreeSync monitor or the FreeSync display that's built in, it's actually a really smooth experience as long as you can get over 40 with it. And just like this, we can get an average of 42 FPS. There's a little more that we can do to get a bit more performance out of this. So I'm going to head into the settings, and we're going to go to... Ultra Performance with FSR 2.0 and we're also going to take the settings down to low just to see if we can hit 60 with it and it's getting really really close. I do want to mention that I have this laptop set in performance mode. There's actually three different modes that Lenovo provides and basically the more power we can send to this APU the better performance we can get out of it up to a point but in performance mode this will boost up to 35 watts and it usually hangs around 25 to 28. Alright, so I've had a few days to mess around with this laptop, and it's really, really snappy. Now, like I mentioned, there's three different performance settings that we can set from the Lenovo Vantage. You can also do this from the BIOS if you want to, or use a third-party application. But we've got battery saving, which is set at about 12 watts. Intelligent cooling will go up to around 20 watts. And extreme performance has kind of a base TDP of 28 watts, with a boost up to 35 that I've seen so far. With all of the testing you're going to see in this video, we're going to be in extreme performance mode. And I want to give you a look at the cooling system here, because I think Lenovo did a pretty decent job. When it comes to a laptop with strictly just an APU, we usually don't see a dual fan setup like we have here. And when it comes to upgradability, basically the only thing we can change is that NVMe SSD. Even the Wi-Fi 6 module is soldered to the board, along with the RAM, because we are working with LPDDR5 here. And that's really how it goes with these Ultrabooks. I mean, they just solder everything down to keep everything nice and thin. But you kind of get what you get here, and really, we can only upgrade that storage. 
But I gotta say, this is a really good performing little laptop. Now the first thing I did was run some benchmarks. And when it comes to Geekbench 5, in performance mode, we got a single core of 1532, multi 8715. Looking really great here for a mobile APU. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Night Raid came in with a 25,746. Fire Strike, 6,955. And finally, Time Spy with a 2,855. So on the channel, I do a lot of APU testing, and these are the highest scores that I've seen out of any AMD APU so far, including desktop variants. Now with the desktop, we don't have those RDNA2 graphics or DDR6, but something like that 5700G with a nice overclock on it can pull up to 150 watts. And this thing's only running at a max of 35 watts. This is some amazing performance from a mobile CPU with integrated graphics. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and I want to see what this thing can do in real-world situations, so let's move over to some more PC games. Alright, so first on the list, we've got Halo Infinite. This is a harder one to run, especially for mobile APUs, but at 720p low settings, we can actually get an average of 77 FPS out of this game. I completely understand that we're only at 720p, but uh, you know, you gotta keep in mind that we're working with integrated graphics, this is a newer AAA game, and seeing it run this well on a mobile APU is really impressive. Next up, we've got The Witcher 3 at 1080p low settings, and to tell you the truth, I would probably want to play this at 900p medium settings and just lock it at 60, but we can get an average of 65 FPS out of it like it is right now. Doom Eternal did much better than I thought it would. We got an average of 71 FPS out of this at 1080p low settings. Now for an APU, this is some of the best performance that I've seen out of the game. And with all of these games, I would highly recommend just turning on V-Sync. You can lock this game at 60 and it's only going to pull around 25 watts with V-Sync on with the same settings I'm using. That way our CPU isn't at 85 degrees Celsius, which still isn't thermal throttle, but it's getting quite warm. Okay, so the last one we're going to test in this video on the internal GPU is Forza Horizon 5. We're at 1080p, no resolution scale, low settings, and we're at 25 watts right now. Really great performance. And at 35 watts, we can get a bit more out of it. If you take a look at Afterburner, our GPU clock isn't quite at 2200 MHz, and adding a little more wattage will get us up there. But it's really playable at 25 watts, and given that we're running this at 1080p on an iGPU is pretty awesome. But we can get a little more out of this laptop because we've got USB 4, and I really want to connect an external GPU to this unit. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this working. What I'm going to do is just set the laptop on the eGPU dock. Uh, the way everything's set up, it's a bit awkward to get to that USB 4 port. But all we're going to do is go ahead and plug that Thunderbolt 3 into the USB 4 port on the laptop. We've already got the fans on the GPU spinning. And the way I've got this set up right now is HDMI from the 3080 Ti to my monitor. We're just going to use that single display there. And I've installed my drivers, at least the updated drivers, from NVIDIA. As you can see, we've got that 6800U. Our 16 gigabytes of 6400 DDR5. We can still access the 680M iGPU, but we're going to be working with this RTX 3080 Ti with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Of course, it's overkill for this little laptop here, but let's go ahead and see what it does. So here it is at 1440p, no resolution scale, and we're at ultra settings. Of course, since we're running this over USB 4, we are losing out on quite a bit of performance out of that 3080 Ti. And you know, if the interest is there, I can do a video testing out other GPUs over USB 4. But this is pretty cool to have an AMD laptop that we can connect an eGPU to. Using a lower end GPU would definitely make sense. And if the interest is there, I can do another video. I can test out some more NVIDIA cards and AMD cards over USB 4. So if that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments below. But I do want to test at least one more game here. Here's God of War, and this is actually working better than I thought. No DLSS, we're at 1440p, and I've got this set up at Ultra. And yeah, very playable. If you remember, we really couldn't even hit 60 FPS at 720p with FSR set to Ultra Performance on the internal iGPU. But with this, we're at 1440p, and we can get an average of 81 FPS. 
I definitely... I was thinking as long as it worked, we'd get a big jump in GPU performance, and we definitely did, but we're not getting as much as we could if we had this 3080 Ti plugged into a real PCIe slot in a desktop PC. We're losing out on a lot of bandwidth over USB 4, but it's working out. So yeah, if you're interested in seeing some more external GPUs connected over USB 4, let me know in the comments below. I can do a dedicated video. But when it comes down to it, the Lenovo 13S by itself is a great laptop. That 6800U is definitely a powerhouse, and even with just integrated graphics, you can get some really awesome gaming out of the way. And now that we know for sure that an eGPU will work over USB 4, on the go, we can use that RDNA2 iGPU, and then when we get home, we could dock this with our GPU and up the resolution. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of the 6800U. Hopefully I can get my hands on a 6600U soon, but if there's anything else you want to see running on this laptop, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave a couple links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.